Welcome back to Universe. I'm Andrew. Oh, hi, Clara. And this is Clara. Uh, today I'm playing Doctor Who Don't Blink board game, where the Doctor and his companions like Clara, oh, and Amy, uh, we go into a crashed spaceship and that is infested with the Weeping Angels. So if you're not familiar with the Weeping Angels, they can send you back in time, absorbing the energy of the life you would have lived, but they can't move unless they are unseen. So don't blink because they move in an instant. Oh, and there's the doctor. And so you have to keep your eyes on them at all times based on an episode, or at least loosely called Don't Blink, but there's actually a better episode, which is the original Weeping Angels episode, which I forget the name of. Oh, and here's uh, Rory driving the TARDIS, apparently. So let's get started. The TARDIS has crashed on a spaceship infested with Weeping Angels. He's with Clara, Amy, and Rory. The TARDIS is damaged. It's dangerous to stay inside. And in fact, scattered parts are all around here, 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 and here. So our heroes are going to have to wander around this spaceship avoiding the Weeping Angels and collecting the parts to bring them back to the TARDIS. If you're not familiar with the Weeping Angels in Doctor Who, you might not know how dangerous and scary that is, but we're all about to find out together. Well, I already know, but I haven't played the game before, so we'll see how it pans out here. And I will say, this is going to be a tough one to play through by myself. I'm going to be playing both sides, the heroes and the angels. Normally there'd be an angels player and then one to four players playing as the heroes. Although it seems to me, based on my understanding of the rules, there's no reason to have more than one person playing the heroes unless you just really want more people to be able to participate. So the angel player actually begins the game by putting four angel cards over. As you can see, there are four plays down and then there are four more that have not been selected for this round. Those angel cards are each one just literally just represents one of these eight angels and that's all they are and that indicates which of them are awake this round and which of them are in a dormant state and i guess you can just barely see them but here for example we've got angel number one which we shouldn't know as the heroes player but that's all that's on there and the heroes are going to be the ones actually taking the first actions each character gets to move up to six spaces their goal is a don't let an angel touch you keep your eyes on the angel don't blink and get these pieces back to the TARDIS. The board has been set up randomly. There are nine double-sided tiles. So there are a lot of different ways this board could look. The TARDIS is in the center. That's like the home base for our characters. It's a blue box that travels in space and time. It's bigger on the inside, so there's plenty of room for all the characters. And actually, I went through the rules a couple times and I couldn't see whether the angels are allowed to move through or around the TARDIS. So I'm going to treat it as a complete blocking space for the angels, but I'm not 100% on that. So I'm going to make a bold move here to start off. Let's have Amy and Rory go together. The TARDIS is taking up four spaces on the grid, but it is considered a single space. So in a sense, you could say that all four characters are in all four of these spaces at the same time. So as they move out, they can move out to any of the adjacent spaces with a single movement. So if Amy move here, for one of her six movement, and then two, three, four, five, six, and she's gonna end her turn facing that angel. And I'm gonna send Rory with her for safety. And as you can see, the standees have a silhouette on the back and then the art on the front. So they're, these are facing standees. The front face is facing front and the silhouette is facing away. And I'm gonna have Rory face away from Amy He's going to be keeping an eye out into this room here. Doctor and Clara should probably go as a team as well. Seems like that's the way to go because you can't turn your back on the angels. So maybe they can go for this piece here, kind of through this route and maybe have her go one, two, three, four, five, six and face that angel directly. The doctor can go one, two, three, four, five, and maybe keep an he'll face this direction to watch for any angels coming through that door there. So now that all the characters have moved, we have to assign their blink question mark cards. Blink or don't blink. And this is not a shuffle deck. This is a stack of cards that the heroes have access to from the beginning of the game. Now this deck can dwindle over the course of the game and we'll probably see that happen but for now they have all of these available and they're for each of their four characters they're going to put one of these cards face down and i do feel like we're in a dangerous position so i'm going to assign them all don't blink cards so clara rory amy 
and the Doctor all have Don't Blink cards, which are hidden from the Angel player. And then the Angel player is going to take their turn, starting out by revealing the four Angels they've activated. So in this case, they've chosen seven, five, three, and one. Not totally random, but yeah, I didn't know what to pick for them. So I just gave them those four numbers to work with. And those are the four Angels that can do anything this round. The other four are completely dormant, so they're not going to be able to do anything. So I think I gave away a bit of information as the heroes already. For example, Amy would not have come up and just stared this angel in the face if she had any intention of blinking, which means... So what could happen is the angels would decide to activate angel 7. They would spend one of their four action points over here to the spent side. They only get four action points for their angel round. And so if they spent one and decided they're going to activate angel number seven, then the heroes would reveal whether Amy blinked. Of course, we know that she didn't, which would mean the action is wasted and angel seven would be frozen until the end of the round because the angels have a quantum self-defense mechanism. that, As long as they are observed, they are completely inert and can't be hurt. Contrary wise, if they are not observed, for example, when you blink, they can move extremely fast and their goal is to absorb the energy of the life you would have lived by sending you back in time and leaving you stranded there. So if the angel touches a hero, the hero vanishes, they'll be out of the game. But as long as the heroes keep their eyes on the angels, they cannot hurt them. On the other hand, a reason to activate angel 7, even though that would be wasting an action point, is that it's not totally wasted. Once a don't blink card is revealed, it will be discarded and unavailable to the heroes for the rest of the game. So even though I said they would start with all of these, that is how this deck can dwindle. So it might be worth spending that action point just to force the reveal of the don't blink. Angels also don't use facing, but they can observe each other, which locks them down. In this game, that is limited to two angels being in the same room in a horizontal or vertical line to each other and they both have to have been activated with the activated number cards. But the heroes can also drag them around and try to trick them into observing each other. I'm not sure what the angels can actually do right now, so I think I'll just use one to close in. Three, they can actually move nine spaces, so four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, of course, the heroes are probably going to be moving, so I don't know if I want to move directly in the same room, but... So that was one action point. I think I'll get angel number three closer as well. We can always move it back in that direction later to protect that uh, piece of the TARDIS. Maybe just here is fine. That's two action points. Number five, it's in the room next door. Seems like they're going to come this way. They go, they can move through the angel. So one, two, three, four, five, six, if they want to maximize their movement. Might move it here. I don't know if that makes sense, but let's try it out. So that's action point number three. I think I will spend action point number four to activate number seven. Because it is in sight of a hero, she gets to or has to reveal her blink card, which of course is the don't blink, which means that one stays revealed. Act or angel number seven cannot act for the rest of the round. And that's it. This card is discarded and the other three cards are actually returned to the heroes. That's the end of the round. So we go back to the angel and they're going to select four new cards for round two. All right, so they picked their new cards, which means it's the new hero turn. And I think they're going to go ahead and go with their plan so they can move through the angel. So just go one, two, three. Of course, Amy's, I'm sure she's keeping her eye on that angel right in front of her as she does. Now she is carrying this piece and she needs to bring it back to the TARDIS. The piece cannot be dropped or shared among the heroes unless she gets nabbed by an angel, in which case it gets dropped in her space. That's the only way to drop it. Now she could just go back the way they came, but there's also safety in numbers. So maybe ending here makes sense a little bit. And then Rory can just two, three, four, five try to defend her and face out that doorway. Laura and the doctor are going for it. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then maybe just face out toward angel number five. The doctor can go one, two, three, four, five, six, facing out, maybe facing this way. And that's all they can do. So they will reveal the angel cards, which are three, four, five, and six, meaning these four angels here 
decided to team up and try to take out the Doctor and Clara. I don't think I mentioned it, but it's interesting. This game uses a lot of cards, but there's no shuffling, which is interesting. I do like shuffled decks, but I also appreciate what they did here using the cards to represent all the different character options. So Angel 5 and 6 are directly in the line of sight of Clara and the Doctor, respectively. Oh, and I didn't assign the uh, blink or don't blink card, so we have to pretend we didn't know about three, four, five, and six. All right, I've assigned them and I've hidden them from you. So maybe uh, you can get the feeling of what the angel player might be thinking now as they are trying to decide should they be activating their angels and which ones. So the way line of sight works is that characters can see the space next to them to the left and right. So the doctor standing here can see this space as well. And if he, uh, he can also see the space Clara is in because you can see one space into an adjacent room if you are at the doorway and in addition you can see everything else in that room so basically he can see everything in this room that he's in except for this space but then he can also see the space that clara is in so that is his line of sight clara can see this space but there's a, a blocking object there so it doesn't matter and then she can see the rest of the room and she can see the doctor's space amy at the door can actually only see this space in this room and in her the room she's in, she can only see these two spaces, and this one's blocked. And then Rory can see these two spaces and this one. So if one of these angels were to come in, as soon as they entered the room, they would have to stop and check to see whether they're seen, which is when we would check the hero's blink card. So the Doctor and Clara have maintained a pretty good line of sight where they're standing. Not a lot of ways the angels can come in after them. On the other hand, this angel could double back to over here and try to mess with Amy and Rory. But no, as soon as it went to activate, it have to check to see if it's seen by the doctor. So that's probably the best option then is to just burn some blink card or don't blink cards or just nab them. So let's activate angel number five and we're going to be checking Clara's blink or don't blink. And she has a don't blink card, which means five is locked down. We'll spend an action point for six to see if the doctor can see it. And the doctor's card is a don't blink. So number six is frozen, which means those two can't act anyway. And we now know that if any other angels enter either of these rooms, they will be seen because we already know that Clara and the doctor did not blink. The only other two angels we can activate are three and four. So I might want to put one, one, two, three, four, five, six seven does that make sense to kind of stand guard over this object or are they just going to run right through us maybe one two three four five six so we have one in each of these three rooms give them some trouble i'm not sure let's try it out and then these two revealed cards have to be discarded these two are returned without the angel player finding out what they were and i will also say that that is a varying level of difficulty that don't blink allows for is the number of don't blink cards that you start with so there are more in the box than what I'm using. Giving the player 10 is the recommended difficulty, but if you want it to be even harder for the players, you can take them down to eight. And if you want it a bit easier, you can bring them up to 12. In addition, there are some don't blink cards that I didn't mention. So there's these uh, blink cards. Whenever you blink, you actually always get that card back. So you'll always have, it there. at the very least, you'll be able to have everyone blink every turn once all these other cards have run out. You also have, a don't blink card with a special ability for each character so you can have the doctor not blink with the special ability and these can be triggered to do extra special effects the downside being after they're used they're given to the angel player and the bottom half of the card shows a special ability the angel player would then gain access to so we'll see if any of those come up here stays safe for now the angel player can assign four new angels all right, so the characters can continue their progress. I think Amy, Amy is going to head toward the door. One, two, three, four, five, six. She's got the object with her. The doc, or Rory can go one, two, three, four, five, six, facing back out behind her. That feels safe enough. And let's try a weird maneuver to see what happens. We're going to send Clara one, two, three, four to pick up the objects, then five and six, and face. Hmm, maybe she needs to face to the side like that. I think that works, hopefully. If not, we'll have an opportunity to see some how new mechanics work. And then the doctor's gonna go one, or one, two, three, four, five, six, standing in this doorway. And maybe he can stand like that to keep an eye on that angel. And yeah, let's see how that works out for them. So we'll reveal the angel cards. 
Oh, and Clara did get this token. The angels revealed three, six, seven, and eight. So it's going to be three, six, seven, and eight. And again, I forgot to put the blink cards down. So let's pretend we didn't know that. So three is actually not in Clara's vision, which was a mistake. Because when you're facing a direction, you can see the space to your right and to your left, but not outside of that. So you can actually very easily come up behind her and defeat her. So I feel like I should fix that just because that's a really dumb move. She could have done this, but of course that would leave this angel four right behind her. So I think maybe instead, this was where she ended with four movement. She might just come back into this room and let uh, the, she and the doctor can keep their eye on angel five. That has another unintended consequence that I'm not going to fix, which is that angel three is therefore unobserved, and it can actually go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. With a movement to spare, it actually can take the doctor. So I should have reset these tokens, but that's actually correct. It spent one action to move and one action to take the... Oh no, because as soon as it enters the room, it is in Clara's line of sight. Because even though the doctor's facing this way, she's looking straight that way. So okay, not as bad for our heroes as I thought. So it has extra movement points, but as soon as it enters Clara's vision, which is that space because that's in the same room, we have to reveal Clara's card and it is a don't blink card, which means Angel 3 is done. And so it hasn't spent that second point to defeat the doctor. But we got another don't blink card out of the heroes, which is good. And that might just be the best strategy for the angels early on is to steal as many don't blink cards so just be happy to enter their line of sight and trigger those cards six seven and eight can still move so let's just do one two three four five as soon as it enters this room it is within the doctor's line of sight so we'll trigger the doctor's card which is a don't blink and seven can go one two three four and enter rory's line of sight and he has a don't blink and then eight will go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because it is in the room or the space adjacent to that doorway. Amy is looking out and can see that angel triggering this blink, don't blink card. They've all played don't blink cards, which is good for the heroes because they're not going to be defeated this round and great for the angels because now one, two, three, four don't blink cards are headed for the discard pile. So put the angel cards away and put new ones out. I should note that the angels have lined themselves in a slightly poor situation, which is that they've got two or more, in this case, three angels that are all in the same room and in a row with each other, which means if at least two of them are be chosen, if they become active, they will freeze. And even though they got chosen, they can't act. So the rules, that's kind of how the rules phrase it. Although when I was reading, I was thinking the players might be able to do something to make that happen. Now that I'm playing, I'm realizing it would just be a blunder on the part of the angel player to select more than one of the angels that are in a row. Instead, what you need to do is you need to start choosing maybe just one of them, if you choose, well, exactly one of them, to get them out of the way and get them out of that lock position. So the heroes know that only one of these three angels can act at most. But their priority, of course, is to be to deliver these pieces. So Amy can easily go one, two, three actually two, three into the TARDIS, which is then adjacent to all those surrounding spaces. That means one piece is delivered. And then she still has three more movements. She doesn't have to stop as far as I know. So it might make sense to go four, five, six. And then maybe Rory can watch that room for her. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that should be safe. Clara has a piece to deliver, but there are a lot of angels closing in. Although again, only one of these three can act. So maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, puts her just on the other side of that door, and then she can keep an eye on the door. Uh, so nobody comes in after her or just nabs her from behind. I think that's actually essential. But the, or I guess the doctor could keep an eye out for her, but maybe he'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. And this might actually be the safest orientation for him. All right, I put the hero's blink cards down. The angels can reveal two, five, seven, and eight. So it's gonna be this one, this one, this one, and this one. Now we're gonna to get to use a new action that the angels can do. So first, first of all, again, I didn't reset those action points, but spend one. We're gonna have angel two go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I guess, it, wait, there was a shorter way it could have done that. But anyway, 
that's the position it wants to be in because obviously Clara can't see it. She's facing this way. The doctor can't see it. It's actually because the spaces to his left and right are all he can see in this line. And then you can see the rest of the room. Well, you can't see anything in Clara's line either. And we're going to do an action called distract where an angel in a room with a hero, but outside of that hero's line of sight, forces that hero to turn and face them. So we're going to spend an action point to make the doctor turn toward this angel. And now there's a big space where no heroes are looking in this room. And angel eight, I just bumped, but I'm pretty sure it has enough movement to get to Clara or the doctor, in fact. And she's the one who has the item. So we'll choose her, spend an action point to move, spend an action point again to defeat our first hero, which means the item she was carrying is dropped right there. That's definitely bad for the heroes because they lost a character, but what they didn't do is lose any of these cards. Nothing got revealed, so all these will go back to the hand, but Clara is done. So we got a new set of angel cards lined up for the next round here, and you can see that two and eight can't both be used because they're in line with each other and in the same room. Of course, the doctor's gonna wanna double back and grab that item, but if he does, he's gonna be in this big group of angels, although he knows that only three of those can activate, although seven is looming nearby as well. Or he could run up that way and try to get the third item there until he can regroup with people who can watch his back. So you know what? I think he's gonna think that the angels were gonna come, or that he was gonna come back this way. So he's gonna go that way. There are fewer angels that way, and they might not have activated in such a way that would take advantage of that opportunity. So he's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Unfortunately, he's got to stop right at this threshold and put his back to that door. I think he could try to go sideways, but they could come up behind him through this room. So I think he needs to face that way because there aren't really any positioned behind him and they'd have to go all the way around back that way. One, two, or this is blocked here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Uh, they're not really going to be able to get close, so he's going to face straight out. Amy and Roy are just going to keep doing their thing here. One, two, three, four, five, six. She's got a good vantage point on the room. One, two, three, four, five, six, which means Rory can face out this way. Oh, that's better. Which means literally the only space in those two rooms that an angel could occupy that they don't see is this one right here. But in order to get there, they'd have to go through this space, which Rory can see. Feels safe, and there aren't really any angels over there. So now they can place their blink cards. All right, so we have our blink cards for the heroes. And let's reveal the angel cards, which are one, two, five, and seven. So one, two, five, and seven. So it looks like one is done waiting around, but where can it go? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine lets it move just far enough to check rory's blink and i think that's probably what it's the best one two three four five six seven eight nine that was one action check rory's blink and it is a don't blink running low on those though to be honest angel two can run in and check the doctor which i think makes the most sense one two three force the doctor to reveal his card which is a don't blink and then five and seven i think just need to reposition one two three four five six seven eight nine and five one two three four five six seven eight nine just so they're not in a direct orthogonal line with each other. And that was all the angel's action points, which means the angel phase ends and we actually reveal our first special ability here, which is the girl who waited, which says, if this card is not revealed at the start of the cleanup phase, which is now reveal it and recover up to two don't blink cards, special don't blink cards may not recover. So this is an example of a special don't blink card. So we would not get one of those back. There are one, there's one for each hero. And so she's going to get two don't blinks out of the discard pile, which is nice because we just revealed two don't blinks that are going to have to go to the discard pile. However, now this card is going to go to the angels and they can play it during the choose angels phase to draw a random card from the hero's hand. And basically they discard it. If it's a blink card, they'll get it back because the blink cards are the bad cards. But if it's a don't blink, it will be discarded. And if it is a hero special ability, don't blink, it will go to the angels the same way this one is going to go to them now. So 
This is going over to the angels, but Amy got these two out of the discard pile to go back into the hand, which is nice because these two are now discarded. So the angels figure they may as well use that effect now. So they're gonna go ahead and cash in this right away. And one of the cards from the hero's hand is gonna be discarded. So for reference, they've just got three don't blinks left, four blinks, which you'll always have access to, and the three remaining special abilities, one of which is Clara's, so they won't even be able to play that. So it's actually 10 cards exactly. So let's roll a D10. One will be the left card and 10 is the right. Card number seven is actually a blink, which is best case scenario for the heroes. So that one won't be available, I'll just put it here. And the angels don't actually know which card that is. All right, the angels made their selection and the heroes can go. So if the doctor moves one, two, three, he can pick up that object, which I'm pretty sure he wants to do. And then which way is he gonna go after that? I mean, I feel like just going five, four, five, six, go right back to where he was and just stare that angel down. Feels pretty good. Similarly, Amy is gonna wanna go one, two, three and pick up this one and then maybe go four, five, six and maybe look out directly or she's already, no, maybe just like that's fine. And Rory can keep her or Watch her back by just going a couple spaces to there. Actually, I think like this is better. We got our hero's cards ready and the angels can reveal one, two, seven, and eight. Which is one, two, seven, and eight. I think angel one's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It has to stop because now it is in Rory's line of sight. It's not in Amy's, but in Rory's line of sight or reveal his card and it is a don't blink. And then angel seven can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which actually puts it in Amy's line of sight because she's next to the door so you can see one space into the next room she can see directly to her left and right so she can see the angel seven we reveal amy's card which is a blink which means angel seven doesn't have to stop now that was two of their four action points but they've got another two more so action point number three angel seven can take amy off the board and the angels have one action left. I think angel number two will just face check the doctor revealing, don't blink. The angels are starting to close in. So these are discarded. Blink card returns to the deck. Amy's gone, hanging out with Clara. And this card also gets revealed. And now we see that it is a blink card, which means it goes back to the player deck. Amy did not think the angel could get to her like that, but it did. So the angels have set their new cards. And our two heroes get to run. So Roy's gonna go one, pick up the object. Then, oops, two, three, four, five, six, maybe. Obviously he can't keep, put his back to them, but would they be able to definitely circle around and get him? So he can't do that. If he were to do this, this angel number one could easily come out behind him. If he does this, they could easily come up behind him from here. So I think he actually has to give up a point of movement and stand like this. So if they come up next to him, he can stop them. But that won't work either. Well, he's assuming that one and seven are going to be active, but those do, do seem like dangerous threats. I wonder what over here might have been activated because he was here. So he could go one, two, three, four, five, six. And something like that might be safer depending on which of the hero or which of the angels are becoming active. The doctor's gonna have a tough time of it coming through here to get this last item, assuming that's what he tries to do. I think the doctor can't really afford to go straight there. Maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, facing out like that. But if five and seven are both active, or even seven and eight are both active, that could be very bad. Or even two. All right, but I think that's what I'm gonna go with. Hopefully that's not too dumb of a move. And the angels are one, two, three, seven. One, two, three, seven. So it looks like the angels can do their pincer maneuver on the doctor. So seven is gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, taking one of the action points. Now it's in doctor's line of sight. So we're gonna trigger his card. Wait, that wasn't the plan, was it? I guess the pincer maneuver was to distract them, to turn them, and then come up behind them. But there's no way an angel could get into the doctor's room in a space that he can't see. So they're just gonna have to check his blink card. And it is 
his special card. When revealed, the doctor moves up to three spaces. The doctor may not pick up spare repair parts or move angel standees with this movement. And then the angel side, they're giving the ability away, is going to be to play this card during the angel phase to gain an extra action point. But that can't be used during the current angel phase. And that's one thing I have not been doing at all, is having the players drag the angels around as they move. It's kind of a free addition to your movement, that if you're adjacent to an angel and you move, you can move the angel into the space you just left, and you can do that as much as you want for your six movement. Which also reminds me, where were angels one and seven? Oh, the seven was here, wasn't it? It was So they weren't in the same room. So even though they were in a line, they weren't in the same room. So I think they were fine to activate. But I wonder if I should have been doing any dragging. For example, when Rory left this space, he could have dragged this angel to like when he was here and this was here, he could have got one and then when he moved back, dragged this angel here. And now I don't even remember where he went. He went, which actually is a pretty good move because that means they cannot both activate. But that was a long time ago and they've already selected everything. So I think he was here like that, right? So yeah, that would have been a, probably a clever maneuver. Of course, the angel player would have not chosen one and seven then. They would have chosen one or seven. But this would have been a safer position because those two angels wouldn't have been able to work together. Only one of them would have been able to act. So now this angel seven triggered the doctor's special power card, which means he gets to move three spaces and change his facing I believe so I think he does want to watch his back there he's watched back through that door I think the angels are going to use their second action point on angel three to go one two three four five six seven eight it is now in it is not in the doctor's line of sight but it is in Rory's so we have to reveal Rory's card which is don't blink which is interesting because now the heroes are out of characters that the angels would need to force card reveals out of but they still have two more action points three and seven are now inert oh you know it would have been smarter well maybe it doesn't matter we can have angel one go one two three four five six it actually doesn't have to... oh rory can now see it so it has to stop yeah no that makes sense and then we can still use two i guess maybe just move it like that so this don't blink is discarded and this the special don't blink is given to the angels who have just selected their new cards. So the heroes can go, but they're both going to do the same thing, which is to move into the TARDIS and deliver their broken pieces. There's just one piece left to go and both the heroes are going to end their turn in the TARDIS. They have a couple extra movement points they can get back out, but moving out makes you vulnerable and well you can only spend one turn in the TARDIS so they can't spend their once they end their turn now in the TARDIS they can't move in their next turn in the TARDIS but it'll be better to go as a pair hopefully is what they're thinking now as they end their player turn in the TARDIS they can't see out at all which means they don't assign blink or don't blink cards that is totally skipped which is actually another right, nice reason to end their turn in there and the angels can go they've got three four six and seven but of course, they're not going to be able to hurt the heroes while they're safe in the blue box. So they're just going to have to move into position to defend this last piece. So six maybe goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Just stand awkwardly like that. Seven can go one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, they can't actually move through each other. Where was it? Here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine three one two three four maybe that's good and four can go one two three four five so really crowding in there the angels have their new cards out and what can our heroes do fastest way is here you can also go around this back side they don't want to waste too many turns because they really don't have cards left even with amy's special ability from before oof this is what their hand looks like an unusable special don't blink and a Rory don't blink along with four blinks, which means the doctor is going to have to blink. So it'd be best if Rory can keep his eyes on the doctor. I'm not sure, but it might actually be unwinnable at this point, just based on the number of don't blinks we have left and the number of turns that will be required. Because if you blink, the angel can get you. And with only one hero left, it will try. So I think Rory's going to have to be the hero. But again, I don't even know if it's possible. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, 
it's actually possible, except that that is a very dangerous position. There are at least four different angels that could come up behind him to this space. Well, actually, fortunately, his special ability means that I think he might be able to avoid it. The doctor is actually not going to be able to help. So I might send him on a bit of a goose chase here. Oh, also, when Rory left this space here and moved away, he could have dragged... Oh, these two aren't... Yeah, he could have dragged five into this space, which puts it in a line with eight. I mean, with seven. So if five, five and seven are both selected, they will be locked. So I think I'm going to send the Goot Doctor just for fun. Let's send him one, two, three, four, five, six. Just put him down here to face this angel. He knows what's coming for him. We will assign cards to the Doctor and Rory and reveal the angel cards. Two, three, four, and seven. So what can they do? And this is interesting, the angels did make a mistake. It's actually kind of an obvious mistake. They should have been able to see that Rory would have ended there and that it would be right next to this angel number eight. They should have chosen angel eight unequivocally. In fact, I'm gonna say that they did choose angel eight instead of seven, because I think the heroes can still get it. But angel eight can just nab Rory. In fact, it's such an obvious move, but I guess they would know that they know Rory's special card. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. The Lone Centurion, Rory may reveal this card when a Weeping Angel activates in his room. Once revealed, Rory can see every square in his room. So you can see that's why I had him facing out into this next room. That way he's watching his back, but using this card, he can see everything in that room. Now it also gives the angels now the ability to play this card before moving a Weeping Angel. Do not check blink cards during this movement, which is extremely powerful. But that's why I held on to this card for so long, because I don't think the angels are going to have a chance to actually use that. Now that Rory can see everyone in that room, there's really nothing they can do. So as soon as the Angel 8 activated to kill Rory, or send him back in time, it got locked by his vision. And now if Angel 2 activates, it will also be locked. So why even spend an action point? And if Angels 4 or 8, or 4 or 3 enter that room, they will also be locked and there's nothing they can do outside of that room other than come up to right face him right here but they would get locked there as well because he can see them that too so rory is invulnerable and all they can do is mess with the doctor so they're going to spend an action point on angel three to send the doctor back he is out now three can move as well with another action point spent and four can go but it just can't go into that room because that would end its move as soon as Rory sees it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe. Just come around to there. But there's no point because basically the cards will go back to the angels. They'll select a new four angels. This card does go to them. They would be able to use this in the future. This card will goes back to our hand as the doctor was defeated. But when Rory takes his turn, he can go one, two, three, four, five, six, back into the TARDIS giving it the fourth piece it needs to get back online. It is a time machine, so according to the rules of the game, he can go back in time and rescue his friends, even though that's not quite what happens in the series. Is it? I guess it depends on who got lost and why. So it definitely started out not as tense as I thought. I was a little confused, but I was burning through those don't blink cards pretty quickly, and the heroes definitely needed them later on. So I'm actually wondering it probably does make sense to throw in some blink cards early on and but you don't lose them unless the angel actually checks and if they check and see a don't blink your hero's probably gone so playing or playing a blink i mean so playing blinks early is very risky i think the fact is you just need to avoid getting checked by angels if you can i think going in pairs is good so your teammates can watch your back and just, yeah, just let the angels see as few of your cards as possible. Because when they reveal those don't blinks, they're gone. It makes things pretty hard at the end. Although, we managed to pull it out. Of course, I was playing on both sides, trying to forget what the other person had. I definitely didn't do as much angel dragging as I could have. And I was looking for opportunities to use the distract option. Oh, that's not what the rules call it. They call it catch attention, where you force a hero to turn and look at you. I was looking for as many options to do that as possible only work once I guess so again you can adjust the difficulty by adding up to two more or removing two don't blink cards from the hero deck it can also help it can help if you just think the game is not balanced one way or the other or just depending on the players if you want to give one player an advantage but anyway thanks for watching subscribe so we can get more subscribers and bye